Last year, no one believed Russia's Maria Butuskaya would be the world champion until she proved them wrong. This season, however, she has struggled to find her footing, losing her national title for the first time in six years. History has shown us that even at age 27, don't count her out. The woman who took that title from her, Irina Slutskaya, did it with the highest level of difficulty in ladies figure skating. She has never looked stronger. Today, at the European Championships, Slutskaya looks to dethrone Butchaskaya again and go to the upcoming World Championships as the favorite. In the men's competition, rising star Evgeny Plashenko arrived in Vienna looking confident, and why not? He's undefeated this season, but has never beaten his countryman Alexei Yagudin internationally. Sparks flew in the short program. Plashenko hit his quad, and Yagudin skated like the world champion he is and holds a lead by the slimmest of margins. Off the ice, the Russians leave each other cold. On the ice, the stage is set for one of the hottest showdowns in the history of the European Championships. breathtaking city of Baroque architectural splendor and the birthplace of some of the finest classical music ever written. The Austrian capital boasts a figure skating legacy equally as rich. Vienna has crowned more European and world champions than any other city in the world. Come on inside Vienna Stadthalle. But for those of you watching back home in the U.S., feel free to call it City Arena. The men have just taken the ice for their warm-up for today's free skate. Now a broken bone in his hand didn't prevent the reigning world champion Alexei Yagudin from competing here. And hot after his title, Yagudin's heir apparent, countryman Yevgeny Plashenko. Hello everyone, I'm Robin Roberts and you are in store for a real treat. The stellar field here in Vienna includes every reigning world champion except ice dancers Krylova and Ofsi Inakov who are not here due to Krylova's back injury. Now this is an important event. A European title carries a lot of weight, a lot of prestige heading into the fast approaching world championships. The ladies will skate later but first Olympic silver medalist Peter Carruthers joins me for the long awaited showdown between Yagudin and Plashenko which could very well be a preview of worlds. Definitely, Robin. Throw some rivalry in there for sure. World champion Alexei Yagudin is going to have his hands full trying to hold back 17-year-old teammate Yevgeny Plashenko, the man that was right behind him last year at the World Championships. Now, these guys aren't going to hold back. They're going to go for their big quads. But right now, Yagudin leads by the slimmest margin. Just one judge's vote separates Yagudin and Plashenko. Well, two weeks ago, heading into this competition, Yagudin injured his hand, he broke a bone in his hand. Is that going to affect him at all? Well, so far it hasn't. In the short program, Yagudin was fine. He hit his quad. He has a soft cast on. He actually shook his hand by accident backstage. I said, oh, sorry, Alexi. He said, no problem. My hand is fine. So I think he's okay there. He has said he may add another quad to try to keep back Plashenko. Now, Plashenko comes into this 5-0, and and at the Grand Prix Series earlier in the season, that is the finals, he had four perfect 6.0s. So this is going to be a great fight for the European title, of which... Alexei Yagudin has owned this for the last two years. And by the way, not a bad Russian accent you got going there, Peter. Well, after the short program, as we take a look at the standings, as you said, Yagudin has a slight lead over Plashenko. Today's free program is worth 50% of the skaters' total score, and many are here to secure a place on their world team. Absolutely, and fasten your seatbelts, Robin, because all these guys are going to try the big quad. First to take the ice, Alexander Apt of Russia, who recently finished third at Russian Nationals behind Plashenko and Yagudin. Apt will try to fire off his quadruple toe loop first in this free program.
Here it is. Oh. Uh, leaning back in the air. Not getting the leg back to stop the rotation. You can see if you start to lean, no chance. But there, nice triple axle forward takeoff into a triple toe, getting his timing back and the jumping mechanics right intact. Nice recovery by Apple. Aptus skating to selections of Celtic music, including River Dance and Lord of the Dance. He struggled with a series of injuries hip injury, knee injuries. In 96, he crashed on the boards during an exhibition tour in Mexico and broke his leg and his skate blade. Cut the quadricep muscle in his right leg. He had surgery. He was hospitalized for six months and couldn't walk for another three months. It's amazing to just see him on the ice. And amazing, no injuries this year for Alexander Apt. He landed the triple axle earlier. Another one right there, very nice. jabs in to get him up in the air. Same kind of mistake, flipping out of that, not positioned properly in the air. Got to be straight, perpendicular to the ice. jump, triple flip. Tough because you've got to place that right foot just right as you jab it in to get up into the air. Nice triple sow cow. You know, Robin, just to come back from that incredible injury, your leg atrophies so much from an injury like that, he's really on a good comeback trail. The jump's getting stronger every time I see him. An admirable comeback by Alexander App of Russia. Here's the quad toe loop. You've got to really get down on the right leg and spring up into the air. He has good height on it, but you can just see he's on the heel of his skate when he lands, and that's what causes the fall, leaning back. And now the marks for Alexander Apt, first of all, for technical merit. Aha. Uh -huh. A low of 5-3 to a high of 5-7. Uh, does it surprise you that that 5-3 comes from the Bulgarian judge and the Bulgarian skater, Denev, is next. And for presentation, 5-3, 5-7 as well. 
Almost the same. And as you said, Peter, coming up next, the Bulgarian champion, Ivan Denev, when we return here to Vienna in a moment. Welcome back to Vienna, everyone. One time home of the great classical composers, Mozart, Haydn, and Beethoven. Their music lives on here at the State Opera House. And next Saturday, ABC Sports will be in Osaka, Japan for the ISU Four Continents Figure Skating Championships. Todd Eldridge will return to compete against his old foe, Elvis Stoiko. Twelve countries from around the world will compete as a road to gold continues next Saturday, 3.30 Eastern and Pacific, all right here on ABC. Next competitor, Ivan Dillon, Bulgaria. And now the Bulgarian champion, Ivan Denev. Denev twisted his ankle a couple of weeks ago, and that was the right foot, so that will be aggravated by two jumps, the triple lutz and the triple flip, because you jab the right foot in on both of those jumps. We'll see what happens. Take off on the left foot forwards here. Triple axle, triple toe loop. Good start. Very good start. He's trying to become the first Bulgarian to ever medal in figure skating at the Europeans. He did not have a quad in the short program, but he's got it scheduled right here. Quad toe. No. Started the lean, failed on the rotation, three revolutions. He thought about it. Yes, he, he thought did. about it. If you're not positioned just right, that's what happened. Sure enough. You called it, Peter, you're right. Well, not for sure, but so much pounds per square inch on that foot when you pick in like that. He has been steadily improving. He received his first medal in a major international competition at Trophy La Ligue in November. Did a nice triple axle in the beginning, and there, all pitching forward, but strong lower back allowed that landing. program lasts four and a half minutes, worth 50% of the overall score. Qualifying round goes for 20%, the short program worth 30%.
circular footwork step. Doing fast changes of position. In a circle around the ice. Triple Salkow moving a little bit slow. He's getting a little tired here. And who wouldn't it? Three minutes and 45 seconds into the program. Could have gotten a little lower on that sit spin, but I want you to remember, we're gonna see some of the guys that come up later on skate a lot faster at the end. So stamina becomes a huge factor to these men. And you can tell how tower, tired he is after that four and a half minutes on the ice. He completed six triples in this program, and boy, was this a good one. The triple axle followed up by a triple toe, well positioned there, and that allows him to get up and do three nice rotations on that second jump. And the injury that he had definitely shows up here. Remember I said that right foot jabbing in, he twisted his ankle, only a double there. It obviously hurt. Mm. Five, four, five, six, now for Ivan Deneves, marks five, first of all for technical five, merit. Two, five, five, two, six, to five, five, seven. five, two, to five, seven. Have to keep five, in mind this seven, member of the Bulgarian army is enjoying his best season five, to date. Now for presentation. Five, four, Five three five, five, to five six. Five, five, that is not enough to overtake five, five, Alexander Apt, who will remain in first place. Deneb now is in five, second. Five, Remember, he captured his first five, international medal this season, a short time ago at Trophy Lalique. Still to skate, the Russians. Yevgeny Plashenko looking for his first European title. And the reigning world and European champion, Alexei Yagudin, when we return to Vienna in a moment. Come on back. This Wide World of Sports update brought to you by Mobile Speed Pass, the fastest way to get gas. It's free and it's only at Mobile. In just three weeks, the World Championships begin in Nice, France, and the United States is sending another powerful team. Two time U.S. national champion Michael Weiss leads the American men comes off a majestic performance at Nationals where he earned a career first 6-0. Timothy Gable holds the other spot on the men's team. He became the first man to land a quad at Nationals and then he did two more, proving he is ready to challenge the Russians. Two-time world champion Michelle Kwan will be among the favorites for gold. With two years to go before the Olympic Games, this could be a crucial turning point in her career. Behind Kwan, rising star Sarah Hughes has the highest level of difficulty on the U.S. ladies team. This will be her second trip to Worlds. Sasha Cohen stole the show at Nationals. Since a U.S. silver medalist is too young to compete in Nice, she must medal at Junior Worlds this Saturday in order to earn a spot on the world team. If not, Angela Nikodinov will get the third spot on the ladies team. ABC Sports and ESPN will proudly bring you 11 hours of exclusive coverage from the World Figure Skating Championships in Nice, France in three weeks. Now on the ice, Dmitry Dimitrinko of Ukraine, third after the short program. Ninety-three, his best year when he won the European Championship. But he's looking for some big jumps, opening with a triple axle, triple toe loop. Kind of at a standstill at the end, but his objective was to stand up, and he did just that. <laughs> Dimitri is 26 years old, a bit older when he won it in 93, and he said a lot has changed in the meantime. What you're hearing is Scent of a Woman, composed by Thomas Newman.
wants to do is keep the speed moving on the back end of this jump and not land in a standstill. That was a little bit better. You could see he had more what we call glide out of that jump. Yeah, you could see that. Second attempt at the triple axel again. Wants to have good speed on the exit and goes up high in the air, but just lands almost in the same spot that he took off. Speed's so critical, Peter. Definitely not conducive to good jumping when you just go straight up and down. Outside edge takeoff on the triple loop. Better there. It's hard not to think of Al Pacino right now, instead of a woman. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> this portion. Last jump, triple sow cow, hop, and double sow cow. Very dramatic ending. Well, that's what the judges will definitely appreciate about his skating, and that is the presentation. Mm -hmm. He's not technically as powerful as a Yagudin or Plashenko, but he does have nice choreography and style when he skates. And the crowd here in Vienna seems to appreciate his efforts. Opened up with this triple axle. Forward takeoff. And... He's skating pretty well here, but watch how he almost lands backwards and puts his foot down on that. So two-footed there, and then the attempt at the quad, only a triple. Got to be perfectly positioned, and you have to be so aggressive if you're going to attack that jump. And now Dimitri's marks for technical five, merit three, five, four, from 5'3 five, five, to 5'7. Five, five, Again, not the strongest jumper in this men's competition, but I think we'll see the presentation scores go up. And you're right, Peter, for presentation, 5-5 five, five to 5-7. Five, seven. And that moves Dimitri into first place. Alexander Apt is now second, Ivan Denev third. Coming up, 17-year-old Yevgeny Plashenko, who was undefeated this season. He and Alexei Yagudin both have quads planned for their programs. We asked Plashenko what is the difference between the two. I have the combination, which we, with my coach Mishin, we call it 432. 
which is quad triple double. And I can do 433, which is quad triple triple. And I do the Bielman spin. And I think that's how I win over Yagudin. The showdown we've been waiting for has arrived. Plashenko will take the ice here in Vienna after this message and a word from our ABC station. Welcome back, everyone, to Vienna and the European Figure Skating Championships. That's the standings right now in the men's competition, but all that is about to change as 17-year-old Yevgeny Plashenko of Russia takes the ice. This could not be better to have Plashenko skate at this point, and then right after him, the world champion, Alexei Yagudin. much personality. His attempt at the quadruple toe loop. Attempt. And oh my goodness. Going for the big combination, triple toe loop, double loop. Oh, he flips out, but incredible. Traditional Russian folk music has everybody into it now. Now the triple axel, three and a half revs, triple toe, right on his game. Triple Axel right here. Look at the speed he has running out of that. You can really see the difference. It is so evident. And athletic. Remember, he's just 17 years old. As you said, Peter, he has a perfect record this season. He won three regular season Grand Prix competitions. Combined, he has 11 six O's. 11 perfect scores this season. Triple Lutz, look at the confidence he has coming out of these jumps and the connecting footwork. He knows it. He knows he's on. mother helped him develop that unusual flexibility by stretching his legs against the couch every day when he was growing up. So kudos to mom. Paid off. It did. Three big jumps left. There's the first. He has a way of connecting with the crowd.
triple sow cow. Look at the way he's skating into these jumps. Good speed in and good speed out. He is well conditioned, very fit. of that Fieldman spin. Wow. Yeah. Wow is right. Yeah, Gooden's got his work cut out for him. An important moment for the 17-year-old as he attempts to win his first European title. All eight triples. The quad. He has set the bar. Kicking things off with the gigantic quadruple toe loop. Watch how he bends to get up into the air. One, two, three, four. That's not enough. He goes for the big triple toe loop after that. <laughs> now we're up to seven revolutions, and then two more on this double loop, which brings it to nine. He flips out of that one, but still nine rotations or revolutions. Unbelievable, and look at how fast he skates into this triple axle, the height he gets. Great arms in the air, tight, just what you need to create rotation. Outstanding. And now the all-important marks for Plushenko. First of all, technical merit. Oh my goodness, five eights and five nines. Very strong marks, but you know, the judges really appreciate his artistry, so I'll be curious to see if the next marks go up even further. Marks for presentation. Five eights and five nines again. He's in first. In a big way. High marks for Alexei Yagudin to shoot for. And now the defending world champion knows what he has to do, and Yagudin will skate when we come back. You're looking at Alexei Mishin, coach of our leader, Yevgeny Plashenko, and former coach of our next skater, Alexei Yagudin. Now, with two-star pupils to coach, Yagudin didn't feel he was getting the attention he deserved from Mishin, so he moved to the United States to train with Tatiana Tarasova. Since then, his reputation off the ice has suffered, but he is adjusting to life in a new country. When Alexei Yagudin moved into his two-bedroom condominium in Freehold, New Jersey last spring, he was looking for stability. The decision to leave Russia had been a difficult but necessary one. I prefer to live here because here I know everything what will happen with me next day, not like in Russia. I know that it's so hard for Russian skaters, which are moving to the United States because they're here a lot. Opportunity has outweighed the sacrifice, but how to cure the homesickness? A visit from mom. I miss my family and miss all my friends who are still in Russia. And when she came here, she just like bringing all that part of Russia. Even in Russia, man's best friend, his dog. So Zoya Yagudna brought along Lawrence, Alexei's Cocker Spaniel. Their time together is precious, but temporary, since her own mother is still in Russia. If Alexei lived in South Africa, that's where I would go, because I want to be with him. I love the United States, but I miss my mother in Russia, too. I'm not excited to leave here, but I know I must. His new home is over 4,000 miles from the multi-family apartment he once shared with his mother and grandmother in Russia. As a child, he was often sick, so Alexei's mother started him skating to improve his health when he was only four. Fifteen years later, Alexei is a two-time world champion with enough financial stability to take care of his family. His success so far is almost like a fairy tale. When he first started skating, we thought he could be good, but nobody thought he would be great. 
So it's like my dream came true. But not the whole dream, because life is not ended. Our lives will continue to get better. There are still dreams to live in the future. And perhaps Yagudin, our final skater of the night, is dreaming of winning a third European title here in Vienna to go along with his two world titles. But first, he must overtake fellow Russian Yevgeny Plashenko. He has been very solid in practice. He is ready to meet this challenge. Let's see if he has the focus that you need to do it. His first quad, the toe loop. Oh, wow. He would, that's not one of his best, but he was so determined. Got through it. Again, you can see his bandaged hand just two weeks before the competition. During practice, crash into the boards, breaking a bone in his hand. But he said he never thought about not coming here to Vienna. Tries it again, the other quad. It'll be right here. No, a oh triple lutz. Boy. Opted out on that. Yagut's <laughs> ah. getting up in the air. On these jumps, triple axle, triple toe. You know, we talk about Plashenko being his heir apparent. Well, Yagudin's only 19 years old, my goodness. We think of him as being much older. Two-time defending world champion, two-time European champion.
Was it enough for Yagudin to retain his European title? Remember, he has never lost internationally to Yevgeny Plushenko. Yagudin scores when we return to Vienna. Back in Vienna, here is St. Charles Church, one of the many examples of Baroque architecture in the city. It was built as a memorial to the victims of the 1713 plague. Tomorrow here on ABC, two-time U.S. women's champion Chris Whitty takes on the world's elite speed skaters in Seoul, Korea. The World Sprint Speed Skating Championships at 1.30 Eastern, 3 Pacific. Anxious moments for Alexei Yagudin as he awaits his scores, and he does not look pleased. Here's the quad toe. First element in the program. He gets up in the air, but he sort of loses it, tilts a bit. But look how strong that right leg is to hold that landing. He was not going down because he knows if he crashed on that, he had no chance to beat Plushenko. Now this triple axel. This was buried in his program, late in the program. Perfect technique. Wonderful height. Total authority on the landing. But this could have opened the door right here. Watch the triple sow cow. Last thing the judges see him do, as far as the jump's concerned, it could be a small thing like that between first and second. And now Yagudin's all important marks. Oh boy, he's just walking off. Oh yeah, these are clearly below Plashenko. Plashenko had that quad, triple toe loop, double toe loop, weighed heavily. Presentation as well, five seven five eight, and you can see he's he is headed off the ice, doesn't want to even see, and he is going to finish second. His countryman Plashenko will win his first European title. My goodness. And here are the final results for the men. Yevgeny Plashenko taking the gold. Alexei Yagudin settling for the silver. And Dmitry Dimitrenko of Ukraine finishing third. Peter is now with our gold medalist. All right, with the new European men's champion, Yevgeny Plashenko, congratulations. You almost made history with that combination. Did you feel you could do it? No, uh... Yes, I, I do this combination, and me and Alexei Nikolaevich, we call it 432. Right now we're working on the combination 433, quad-triple-triple, and I didn't do it today clean because I was tired. Did you feel coming into this that you could steal the title away from Yagudin? I never think about this. I'm just skating. And the judges deciding who is going to be the first, second, or third. Absolutely, but you and Yagudin used to train together. Did you learn anything from Alexei Yagudin when you were training together? Nothing. Wow, okay. Well, congratulations to the European champion. Good luck at Worlds. Thank you. Robin, back to you. Well, you heard it. Nothing at all did he learn from his former training partner, and that makes us want to watch the upcoming Worlds even more as this battle continues between Plashenko and Yagudin. Peter is backstage with him right now. Lexi, good effort out there. How do you assess your performance tonight? You know, I had so many problems in this new millennium, so I had problems with my boots before Champion Series Finals, so I missed one of the most important competitions of the year then. Before coming here one week ago, I broke my arm, so it was like huge. So many problems were before European, so I think that I did. It was enough for me. Was what the I did? Yeah. Was the hand a factor? Did it hurt? Actually, no. I w I did what I was able to do at this moment. So now I have a lot of time. One month before Waltz, and I will prepare for it. That's just it. Can you go home, train, and get your world title? Yeah, sure. You can. What do you Probably. need to What do you need to do? Nothing, just work, and then we'll see. I can't say exactly will I win or will I lose because I never know what will happen tomorrow. So probably I will work for this. No, not probably. I will work for this, and we'll see what will happen. All right. Well, thanks, and good luck. Thank you. 
Алло. Слышишь? Да, привет, мамуль. <laughs> As you can imagine, Yevgeny Plashenko couldn't wait to phone home and tell his mama of his victory. Much more ahead, another Russian rivalry in the ladies' competition. Arena Slutskaya on the comeback trail, and the reigning world champion Maria Butuskaya skate for gold after this message and a word from our ABC stations. In the past two years, only two women have beaten Michelle Kwan, Russia's Maria Butuskaya and Irina Slutskaya. In the most serious act of skating terrorism in recent history, Maria Butuskaya's car was bombed the day before Russian nationals. Since then, the reigning world champion has not reached the top of the podium in any competition. The thing was it happened like 12 hours before I was supposed to start skating at Nationals. And I think it was the person who was really jealous of my success. Some people, you know, have like idea who do this, you know, and I don't know. Everyone say it's like uh, American Tonica Harding and Nancy Kerrigan, you know. <laughs> and lots of people talk about it. It's scary a little bit because Russia, this is not, you know, not so very nice uh, country. Lots of criminals in Russia, I think, it's my idea. Like, somebody hurts her to the head, not for the car, you know, who needs her car. It's off. I'm a strong person, and maybe I'll skate even better to prove I'm the best. Today, Maria Butuskaya hopes she can put her fears behind her and win gold again. And while Butuskaya has been struggling, Arena Slutskaya has never been stronger. She won two European championships as a teenager before sliding off the international scene. This season, she has risen from the ashes with the highest technical content of any female skater in the world today. She is in first place after the short program and hopes to celebrate her 21st birthday in Vienna with a third European title and her third victory in as many months over Butuskaya. The ladies skate for gold and for the favorite position heading into the upcoming World Championships in Nice, France in three weeks. Welcome back to Vienna, Austria, everyone, as the 2000 European Figure Skating Championships continue. Back inside Vienna Stadthalle, City Arena, the ladies have taken the ice for their warm-up. Robin Roberts and Peter Carruthers back with you. Maria Butuskaya's troubles have followed her here to Vienna. The reigning world champion is currently in third place behind two Russian teammates. Butuskaya must win today's free program to have any shot at gold. And quite frankly, Peter, she has been struggling. And where Maria struggles is on the jumps. What happens is she gets on the ice, she gets stiff, and then she has awkward stumbles that lead to bad scores from the judges. And that's just what's happened so far in this competition. But imagine coming to the European and championships and two months before that you've had your car blown up that's got a weigh in heavenly on your mind and for sure it does but then there's our current leader arena slutskaya two-time european champion she has the highest level of difficulty in lady skating today and she beat michelle kwan with two triple triple combinations at the grand prix finals to prove it now for slutskaya with a big win today that sets her up very well for the world championships so she'll be looking for that and and consider that last year she didn't even make it out of her Russian national, so it's a big step up for her. And the Russians are very dominant again as we take a look at the standings. They are one, two, and three. 17 year old Victoria Vachkova skated a clean short program despite being bothered a bit by a slight leg injury. Today's free program is worth 50% of the skater's total score. First escape. Maria Butuskaya of Russia. She finished second behind Irina Slutskaya at Russian Nationals in late December, losing the title for the first time in six years. Is it tough, Peter, to be the first one out on the ice? Absolutely it is, because you've just come off the warm-up. You can't really do a full warm-up because you want to save energy for the free program. But the main thing for her is to stay relaxed, keep her timing, and not get stiff on the jumps. So it will give her a better chance to have success on those jumps. First, 
jump, the triple lutz. Much better than what we saw in the short it. program. Yes. Much better. That's the timing she wants. She admits that nervousness is her biggest weakness. You'd be surprised by someone who's won as much as she has. Skating to a powerful piece, Tchaikovsky's Swan Lake. Saying being 27 years old, that she has a little more that she can bring to this performance than someone much younger. She has fired off two nice triples. She has five left. Oh, she's looking much better, Peter. Looking like a world much champion. Better. Yes, <laughs> the world champion that she is. Free skate is four minutes. there, a little awkward in the air. Hoping for a triple. But this is not the short program where you get deductions. It just takes away from your base mark. Steyer definitely saved her best for last. She was quite good. However, remember at the World Championships, she landed seven triples. Here she has landed five. Not a bad performance for her, but not her best. But the character was much more in place with Swan Lake. Well done. It was important that she started off with a bang, and that's what she did here with this triple Lutz. Good height on it, and look at the landing. Nice and smooth, a good continuous edge. She wasn't stiff, she got her timing going. That was the first jump that she did. The last triple in the program was this, the triple toe loop. Left foot jabs in, going backwards to create the rotation. Tilting just a touch, but not really bad at all. Good for her. <laughs> And now the marks, first of all, for technical five, six, merit. Five, six, five, they range six, from 5.6 five, six, to 5.7. Five, five, Remember, 6.0 is the perfect mark. Five, In order for Butraskaya to win, six, 
She has to win the free program, and Slutskaya has to be third or lower in the free program. Let's see now her five marks eight. for presentation. 5'8 five five to 5'9. Five five Much better. Appreciating Swan Lake. That clearly puts her into first place of those that have skated thus far, but will it stand up? That we have yet to see. The International Skating Union, the sports federation that governs figure and speed skating worldwide. With a membership of more than 50 countries, the ISU is responsible for the technical control and the direction of the world's most important skating events. The International Skating Union, bringing you grace, power, speed, and champions since 1892. Welcome back to Vienna, seat of the Habsburg court for over six centuries. Here's a look at the Hofburg, or the Imperial Palace. It now houses the offices of the Austrian president. ABC Sports coverage of the European Figure Skating Championships continues in two weeks with the pairs and dance competition. Be sure to join us Sunday, March 19th, as world champions Berznaya and Sika Relice try to defend their title. Plus, we'll have a report on the ice dance competition that's all right here on ABC, home of the World Figure Skating Championships. Next competitor, Celia Fontana, Italy. And now Italian champion, Silvia Fontana. Trains in Simsbury, Connecticut. At her hometown is Rome, Italy. She had a great short program. In mm -hmm. fact, it was so good for her that it brought her to tears. The first of her six triples planned. Uh, pitching forward, causing the hand to come down. She'll want to try to keep her lower back straighter on this triple flip. Again, you can see the lean. cause that error. If you rush a jump, that is you try to jump before your body's ready to take off. Right. That's what happens. Is it tough once you're out of sync to get it back in four minutes? At that point, you just have to relax and go into your training pace. Do what you're used to doing in practice. concentration on her face <laughs> right now, every time. As I said, Sylvia trains back in the States in Simsbury, Connecticut. In fact, her boyfriend is American John Zimmerman, who recently won his first U.S. national title. 
in pairs with Kyoko Ina. Triple toe loop, much better. Last big jump in her program, the triple south cow leading. not what Sylvia Fontana was hoping for. <laughs> you can see the disappointment, but still has a, a big smile on her face. She's here at Europeans, a prestigious event. And much more to come from here in Vienna, including Arena Slutskaya on the comeback trail. Backstage preparing to skate in just a little bit. Stay with us. Welcome back to Vienna, everyone. Athena, the Greek goddess of wisdom, stands before the parliament building. Tomorrow here on ABC, two-time U.S. women's champion Chris Whitty takes on the world's elite speed skaters in Seoul, Korea, the World Sprint Speed Skating Championships at 1.30 Eastern, 3 Pacific. <laughs> And now the scores for four, Fontana, seven, first of all, for technical four, merit. Nine, wow, four, one, quite low due four, to the six, mistakes. Man, 4-1 four, four, to 5-0. Five, oh. five, yes. Try to range four, there. It is not good for four, her, nine, those three, mistakes. Two, On her left, Galina uh, Smevskaya and Smevskaya's daughter five, and one, Victor Petrenko's five, one, wife. On five, her right. Four, and for presentation five, again, a wide four, range of scores, a low of 4-8 to a high five, of 5-6. Five, Thank you. So Maria Butyrskaya remains in first place. Fontana can only manage a fourth place finish right now. Next is Kate, Vanessa Kuzmaoli, France. From France, it's Vanessa Kuzmaoli. With this fourth place after the short program, she is definitely up where she wants to be in the standings. Now, jumps and her interpretation of Legends of the Fall. jump next to the triple axle. It's the triple Lutz. Right foot kicks in. Nice. Good oh, start. Excellent start. Triple axle being the hardest jump to do in figure skating, except, of course, for the quad. Sure, sure. Triple flip. Oh, she's got a good one going so far. Because of an injured ankle, she was only able to compete for the first time this season at French Nationals, and she won her first national title. And she's quite an athlete, competitive water skier. She won the French National Water Skiing title in the under 21 category.
She's got it going. Having won the world bronze medal back in 97, she's got some experience she can pull upon that well, some of the other ladies don't have. That's right, and Peter, at that time, she'd only competed on the international circuit for a year. And look at that, oh. another triple Lutz. This is big time for the jumps. Her previous best finish at Europeans, fifth. She's looking for a medal this year. Goodness. 21 year old Vanessa Gusmaroli making a statement here in Vienna. And how? Oh, you'd love to see that type of emotion. It means so much to her. And she should have that type of emotion because the jumps that she performed were very difficult. Having won the bronze in 97 and then. In 98, she went down to 16th place. Let's check to see if this is a two-footed landing on the first triple Lutz that she did. Watch to see if both feet touch down. No, it was clean, indeed. So that means that she did complete six triples. And here's the second triple Lutz. This is really racking up the credit for her. These are big jumps. Remember, I said it's the triple axel that's the only triple that's harder than this. It'll be interesting to see what happens with these scores. The marks for and now the marks for Vanessa Gusmaroli. First of all, for technical merit. Five, six. Oh my goodness, uh, five, 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 eight. Five, uh, five, five from five, the U.S. Seven. judge. Uh, somewhat of a surprise. I mean, she did two triple five, lessons. Seven, yeah. The I crowd, as you can hear, doesn't seven, like it, Peter. Five, not like seven, it at all. Five, five. Whoa. Thank you. Five, five eight, I'm all for that. And now for a presentation. Five, seven. A bit better, five, five six seven, to five, nine. Up to five, five nine, eight, but still, I'm five, just surprised seven, she really turned in such five, a good performance. Seven, Low scores there. Low scores, not enough to overtake Butraskaya, who remains in first. Kuzmaroli is now in second. And coming up next, it's been a fantastic season thus far for Irina Skutskaya, who goes for her third European title after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Welcome back to Vienna, everyone. About to take the ice, Serena Slutskaya. She has had a fantastic season, an impressive, decisive win over Michelle Kwan at the Grand Prix Final. Now, many had written her off, but with a win here in Vienna, Slutskaya will be the favorite heading to Worlds. 
At the ripe old age of 21, Irina Slutskaya is experiencing a rebirth of her skating career. In 1996, at age 16, she burst on the scene and won back-to-back -back European titles. But her quick success was followed by a sudden decline. After taking second at 98 Worlds, she didn't even make the 99 Russian World Team. Her federation told her she was finished. I am not agree uh, with some people who say she's finished skate. Of course, I have little, like, hurts somewhere inside me. I have moments when I doesn't want to skate, I doesn't want to do nothing, I'm just crying. But I'm change, I change in my mind uh, lots of things and I change, I change all. <laughs> Being dropped from international competitions was a wake-up call for Slutskaya. She lost the weight she had gained after winning her titles. Slutskaya came back this season all grown up, a newlywed with a fit body and a positive attitude. I never think about, oh, somebody win, and I just doesn't win. I never think like this. Uh, I just want to be myself. You must be ready, not just for jumps. You must be ready in your head and all your body and everything. When I die on the ice, I finish skiing. I think like this. I start like new life. What a comeback, and now she knows what she has to do here in Vienna. Her countrywoman, Maria Butruskaya, is currently in first place. Butruskaya about to take the ice, a remarkable season, as she goes for her third European title. She has a new freedom in her skating. I think now being married, that has helped her. She's relaxed, focused. And talk about determination. <laughs> and talk about being fit. She looks great. She indeed will go for those two triple, triple combinations. And they're right off the bat. Triple, triple, she's close to the boards. Quite close, but she knew it. Triple Lutz, double loop. The second attempt, two triples back to back. First, the Sao Cow. And she opts out of the second triple jump. Why do you think she did that, Peter? If you don't feel comfortable at that very second, sometimes you don't want to risk the fall and go lower in the standings after the short program. But look at that. <laughs> so much for playing it safe. Love it when the crowd gets into it. In 96, Lutskaya became the first Russian or Soviet woman to win the European title. She successfully defended her title in 97, and the Russian women have won every European title since.
that determination, very apparent. That's what you need, attack, and good technique. She's got both of it. Perhaps looking at the new European champion? I'd say there's a very strong chance of that. Not her absolute best, but definitely it could be the winning performance. Oh, come on, she wants to leave something for Worlds. Arena Slitskaya kept her timing intact. She is fit, as you mentioned, Robin, that allows her to get up into the air with good rotation positions needed to do jumps like that. And look at the confident head position on the way out. Not only does she land the jump, but she has a very nice look on the landing. Again here, the same thing. Look how nicely she finishes off. The hand positions show that she's paid attention to every detail of that jump from front to back. And now Slutskaya's marks, first of all, for technical merit. Five, eight, five, oh, yeah. Five, eight, and five, nine, nine across the board. Five, Take a look eight, at that. She didn't do five, her triple, eight, triple combinations, five, eight, but five, obviously eight, good enough. Five, eight, five, eight. Thank you. Marks for presentation. And now for presentation. Five, nine, five, seven five, to five, five nine. nine. That's five, good enough nine, for first. Very five, solid eight, scores. Five, nine, five, five, nine, High marks indeed, and you five, see there every judge five, has Lutskaya five, in first place. Coming up next, the only woman who can beat her fellow Russian, Victoria Volchkova. This Wide World of Sports update brought to you by Mobile Speed Pass, the fastest way to get gas. It's free and it's only at Mobile. At the pairs competition here in Vienna, two-time world champions Berznaya and Sika Relice came back from a rough start in their season to win a second European title. After trailing in the short program, Berznaya and Sika Relice skated a gutsy and emotional free program, receiving five nines across the board for presentation. They are the favorites going into the world championships. In the ice dancing competition, Anasina and Pezera electrified the arena, bringing the European title back to France for the first time in almost 40 years. You'll see coverage of the pairs and dance competition March 19th at 1 o'clock Eastern on ABC Sports. And with our final skater about to take the ice, let's take a look at the ladies' standings right now. Arena Skutskaya in first, Maria Butuskaya now in second place. Their Russian teammate, 17-year-old Victoria Volchkova, the only woman left with an opportunity to defeat Slutskaya.
opening triple Lutz. Oh my goodness, huge. What a way to start. Meeting the 17 year old. Meeting the pressure mm -hmm. that Slutskaya put down right before her. Peter, do you watch the skater before you? Typically, no. Another great jump, triple flip. Keeping that timing going. Here's the triple loop. It's all working for her. Volchkova finished third at last year's Europeans. Russian world team. At, oh. oh, and as you mentioned that, I'm thinking about how important this is because yeah. the Russian Federation is waiting to see how she skates here before they make their decision for the third spot of the Russian world team. Yulia Sadarova also being considered for that third spot behind Slutskaya and Butyrskaya. Too bad, failed rotation there. She's got some nerves creeping into her mm -hmm. performance and that's changing the timing on the jumps. Such a promising start. Oh, that, ah, the wheels are coming off here. But remember, she is nursing a slight injury, a slight leg injury, or, but having problems with one of her calves. That may be what we're seeing. Absolutely, there was no indication of that in the short program, for she was just perfect there. Though she did talk about it after, but you're right, it was not uh, evident at all in her performance in the short program. As you can see, getting a little sloppy on the landings of the jumps. She definitely does show a lot of promise, but you can tell how quickly things go away when the jumps fall apart and how important they are in a performance. But her artistry is lovely. We'll be back with her scores in a moment. Vienna, Austria, a city of old world charm with a long tradition of winter sports. Vienna hosted the first international figure skating competition back in 1882, and as you can see, they still love it today. And next Saturday here on ABC, we'll be in Osaka, Japan for the ISU Four Continents Figure Skating Championships. Todd Eldridge will return to skate against his old foe, Elvis Stoiko. Twelve countries from around the world will compete as the road to gold continues next Saturday, 3.30 Eastern and Pacific, all right here on ABC. Victoria Vojkova awaiting her scores. Her inflamed calf injury may have been a problem in her free skate. Certainly not the performance you'd hoped for, Peter. Vojkova's... Triple Lutz 
The right foot picks in to get you up into the air. Really nice height on that. And Robin, in regard to that injury, in the beginning of the program, you can feel pretty good, but as time goes on and the lactic acid starts to settle in, it can really irritate it. So here, triple toe wally, going down, reaching for the ice, just a break in concentration or possibly that injury. And now the marks for Volchkova. First for technical merit. Five, 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 four, five, four, Ranging five, from 5'4 five, five, to 5'6. Five, and this is kind of strange because remember how five, well Guzmaroli from France five, skated. Six, It'll be interesting to see what the next mark does. Does Guzmaroli pull up? 5'4. Five, six, five two five, to five, five six. Five, five, that two, drops Gusmaroli to fourth. Volchkova oh. is five, now in five, third. Gusmaroli oh so close to getting a medal, but still fourth place, her best European finish. And Slutskaya has reason to smile. So let's take a look at the final standings in the ladies' competition. Victoria Volchkova edges out Vanessa Guzmaroli for the bronze. Now, she actually finished behind Guzmaroli in the free, but she knocked her off the podium since Volchkova skated better in the qualifying round and the short. A solid performance by the reigning world champion, Maria Butraskaya, and for Irina Slutskaya, it's her third European title. She's with our Peter Carruthers. Thanks, Robin. The new European champion, Irina, last season, you didn't even get out of the Russian nationals. Now you once again have regained your European title. How did you do it? Um, I, I'm so, I have a lots of work and I think it's just work and I wanna say thank you for my coach and parents and my husband they so helped me uh, going back again on the ice. <laughs> well, you look beautiful on the ice, but everybody's been talking about your triple-triple combinations. Today, we did not see them. Did the jumps feel comfortable? Yes, jumps feel comfortable. Uh, I need tonight, uh, like, you know, clean, my clean program. Uh, I can't do mistakes tonight. This is, can be like, if uh, I have mistake, I can be third or fourth and everything like this. I need a clean skate. And I, I didn't try triple-triple. Well, it was still a very good performance, and we wish you luck at the upcoming World Championships. Thank you very much. You got it. Back to you, Robin. All right, Peter, thank you very much. Indeed, a strong performance by Irina Slutskaya, who heads to Nice, France as the favorite. And a reminder, you can see the pairs and ice dancing competitions for the European Figure Skating Championships March 19th at 1 p.m. Eastern. ABC Sports is home of the World Figure Skating Championships. We'll bring you 11 hours of coverage from Nice, France, beginning on ESPN March 29th. ABC Sports is online at ESPN.com, part of the Go Network. For Peter Carruthers, I'm Robin Roberts. Goodbye from Vienna. This has been a presentation of ABC Sports, continuing the tradition of excellence.